Hey, hi, hello. Welcome or welcome back. I'm Heather or Miss Polstoid if you're one of my students and this is Pages with Polstoid. I'm so glad you're here. I get to talk about something that I absolutely look forward to every single year, which is happening in March and it's called Middle Grade March and I'm going to recommend some awesome books for that. If that sounds good, stay put. All right, so we are going to talk about Middle Grade March and the prompts. I'm going to give you two recommendations of ones that I have read, and then I aimed for two <laughs> for ones that are on my possibility list. But um, yeah, there's a lot, and I'm super excited. And you will rarely, if ever, see me do a TBR because um, I am a mood reader to the extreme and I can make all the plans in the world and um, they will probably not come to fruition. So it's easier for me instead of a TBR to be read, I will do a possibility list. So let's see my possibility list. They're big. All right, so Middle Grade March is happening. I'm so excited and I will link below the creators of Middle Grade March, the ones that host it, the ones that um, have been doing this for years so that you can kind of get to know them. Um, they will be linked below so you can get more information and I highly recommend you check them out. Krista at Books and Jam, I think is the creator and she's had lots of people over the years who have joined her and helped out. And I've only been, this is my third year participating in Middle Grade March, and I'm delighted. Second, this is my second, maybe my second or third year participating in Middle Grade March. I'm having a brain moment. Anyway, I'm super excited. And so here's the prompts. The first prompt is to read a book with a one word title. I love this because um, that is so easy to fulfill. In fact, my possibility list is like ooh, astronomical. So um, while I promised you two, I'm actually going to give you four. I don't have all of those books here with me. I apologize. Um, so I'll put the image up here and that way you can see the cover, the title, the author, everything with it. So the first one is one that I read last year. I have absolutely loved it. It was so fun and it's called Witchlings. It follows this group of lovely witches that are about to find out what house they're going to be going into. There's a ceremony when you turn a certain age and you get um, put into your houses, except every year there's some leftovers. They only accept so many and then there's always some leftovers and the leftovers are called spares. And our main character, Seven, ends up being one of those spares. And basically her little coven, there are three of them, have to prove that they're absolutely worthy and um, deserve to have their magic and be recognized. And they do so much. It's, um, it's a fantastic, book. Loved it. Loved every second of it. The next one is Awkward. It's a graphic novel. It is one, it's the Barry Brook Middle School um, series. There are four of them currently and they all have one word titles. So you can read Awkward and Crush and Enemies and one more that I can't remember off the top of my head. That whole series would count. They're fantastic. Love them, love them, love them. Okay. Um, and then my third Third recommendation, I actually have the book. It's called Restart, Gordon Corman. Fantastic book. I put this into the hands of middle schoolers all the time. You have a bully, the worst bully in the school, falls off his roof and gets amnesia. Can't remember anything about anything, about who he was, who his friends were or anything. And so when he goes back to school and he's trying to figure out, you know, <laughs> how to be who he is, he doesn't actually like so much who he used to be. And so he kind of gets a restart. It's fantastic, fantastic. Um, Gordon Corman is fabulous and funny and really understands middle school and middle grade. 
love this book. And then finally is Mascot, which is a book that I read earlier uh, this year, I think. It is a book in verse. It takes, I think, seven different perspectives all about what to do in a school when the mascot of the school is offensive. It was very well done. I highly recommend it. It's a pretty quick read. So those were my four that I recommend. What am I going to read? Because I've already read all of those. Well, I'm so glad you asked because this pile is <laughs> just screaming my name right now. So I'm more than likely going to go with Ghost and Ghost fits also the last prompt I'm going to talk about, which is a book that you feel like you missed out on. I recommend these two kids because you can't go wrong with Jason Reynolds, but every book in this series follows, it's a one name title <laughs> and it follows a track team. Each kid has their own thing that they're going through. And so while you are getting the, the team and that whole thing, you really dive deep into each kid that's in there. Anyway, Ghost is probably my number one choice because I'm trying to read books with names in the title this year. So I could really use a G this year. So I will probably read Ghost even though it's on my possibility piles. Fuzzy is a robot goes to school and we're trying to figure out how the dynamics of that are. And of course we have bad guys that we're trying to defeat or dissuade or anyway um I think I read this years and years and years and years ago and so I'm actually really excited sorry there's the authors um really excited to try this one again so that's another possibility pile and then I have these four graphic novels that are all by the same author that are kind of all interrelated that I'm actually really wanting to read. And so I've got a huge pile of graphic novels are so fast and easy. So um, really excited about those. Like I said, possibility piles. And then this one's been on my radar since last year. It's kind of based on the author's experiences. Um, so here he is in middle school. Ross Maloney has always just wanted to fit in, but when he's diagnosed with a rare eye cancer, he's suddenly the standout cancer kid of seventh grade. This has looked really good. It was actually in the running for the Grand Canyon Reader Award last year, and I wanted to read it for a while. And that's Wink. So tons of possibilities on that one. Not all of my categories are quite that successful. <laughs> Category number two, debut novels. This was tough, like hard to figure out what books are the author's debuts. You do have to do a lot of research. And so one I've already recommended and that was Blackbird Fly. This is the um, debut novel of Erin Entrada Kelly. Watching Apple grow and understand what real friendship is and start to believe in herself and the music that she's capable of is beautiful. It's That's a really beautiful thing. The other one that I'm recommending, Obi is Man Enough. I read this one last year. Fantastic. Again, um, this is the author's debut novel and kind of highlighted some of their own personal experiences. Obi Obadiah is a trans swimmer and they are in middle school and they are dealing with coaches and teachers and people and being true to themselves and what real friendship looks like and what real acceptance looks like and how to just face those things. There's super good mental health representation in this one and um, I loved it. I loved everything about it. So fantastic book. Possibilities. I actually have a large group of possibilities for debut novels because I really tried. I have Steph Soto, Taco Queen. Um, it's not that big. Should be a pretty quick read. And basically, Steph is needing to help out her family's taco truck. I'm excited about it. I've had it on my shelf for a little while and I really would love to read it. Um, this one, again, on the Grand Canyon Reader Awards last year. It's called Pippa Park Raises Her Game. It's by Erin Yoon. I have been wanting to read this for quite a while. Pippa gets like a weird scholarship opportunity to go to another school and she tries to kind of reinvent herself. Worlds collide. 
I'm really looking forward to this one. And they both have names in them, which is what I'm looking for. This is a strange recommendation, but this is probably one I am going to read. It's called A Whole Nother Story. I've had this one forever. It's Dr. Cuthbert Soup. So if you, <laughs> I'm trying to read my shelf challenge as well. Like, you know, you're reading all kinds of challenges. It's silly, it's goofy, and it was highly recommended by my own child to me for years now. It's, they, they have loved this story. They've read it multiple times. They laugh out loud. It's just, um, quite hysterical. That is the sock puppet named Steve. And basically it's a story that's like no other that you will meet. Three attractive, polite, relatively odor-free children, a psychic hairless dog, top secret government agents, international super spies, one of whom happens to be a chimpanzee, corporate villains, a cowboy poet, various members of a traveling circus, and of course the sock puppet Steve. I'm super excited to read this one. It's a debut novel and why not? Why not? And then finally, there's another one that I really want to read, What Stars Are Made Of. It is the debut novel of Sarah Allen. What pulled me into that one was actually a recommendation of a different book of hers. And so then I went to look for her debut. This is her debut and it centers on our main character who is a STEM girl which that's awesome. But on top of that, our main, the main character has Turner's syndrome. I have taught students and had friends who have Turner's syndrome and I've never seen a main character center that. It is in own voices. It sparked my interest. So I am for sure going to be reading that one. So very excited to just kind of follow this lovely STEM girl as she uh, focuses in on stars. Yeah, it looked really, really good. The next one is Immigrant Refugee. That's our category. And a couple that I have mentioned already do count in this one, if you like to double dip. <laughs> um, so the first one is Manana Land that I'm recommending. I read that one last year. Fantastic. Wow. The book focuses on uh, the main character trying to figure out what the struggle is and why he doesn't have a birth certificate. And he kind of goes through some adventures and some realizations and looks at his grandfather's stories that he's always been telling him about the heroes that rescue people. And maybe they aren't just stories. And it's, it's beautiful. It's an incredibly jam-packed emotional ride. Manana Land, gorgeous story, highly recommend. The second one, that I uh, have is Front Desk. This one's been around. In fact, Kelly Yang has multiple in this series. So I've actually read this one, <laughs> but I haven't read the second and third in the series. So I'm actually thinking that I might pick up those as recommendations, but um, Front Desk is my recommendation. Our main character, Mia, her family has come to California and they are running a hotel and things are different. Uh, it's a fantastic read. If you've never read a Kelly Yang, I highly recommend. She really gets middle schoolers. She does a very good job with it. Um, it's fun. It's a fun book. Okay, so those are my two recommendations. What am I reading? Well, here's my possibility list, and I probably am reading this one because the name on it gives me the Z or the Y for my middle grade bingo that I'm trying to do. But this is Zachary Ying and the Dragon Emperor. This is the author that wrote this one, wrote some others that you're probably familiar with. Uh, I did not know that till I started doing some research here. I am super excited to read this now. So that's at the top of my list for this one. So, so Zachary Ying has never had many opportunities to learn about his Chinese heritage. His single mom was busy enough making sure they got by and his school never taught anything except Western history and this. So Zach is woefully unprepared when he discovers he was born to host the spirit of the first emperor of China for a vital mission to seal the leaking portal to the Chinese underworld before the upcoming ghost month blows it wide open. Only things go wrong as things will. 
And instead of the spirit in um, inhabiting him, I believe it inhabits his like VR headset. So this looks fun and fantastical and I love it and I can't wait to read it. The next one that I have on my possibility list is getting all kinds of awards and recognition right now and it is called Mexi Kid. And I'll put it right here. It's a graphic novel and it basically focuses on a family that is going down to Mexico to get, I believe, the grandfather and bring him back. I can't wait. It looks fantastic. It's getting all the awards and um, everybody's raving about it. So highly recommend it for you too, but I haven't read it yet. So that's on my list. And then um, finally, Boy Everywhere. So this one follows Sammy who um, has lived in Damascus, Syria for a while, but things start to happen and it becomes too dangerous and his family basically immigrates to the UK, only it doesn't go wonderfully and there's some pushback. And so this just looks heart-wrenching and timely. So I'm actually very excited to read this one, trying to avoid the glare. So, and I've been trying to read this one for a while now. I've checked it out from the library multiple times. So I'm getting to it in March. Boy Everywhere. Our fourth category is Animal on the Cover. This one's not hard. <laughs> and there's a whole variety of books you can go with. For my recommendations, I am going with a couple different ones. I just read it last month. It's called The Barren Ground. It is the Miswa Saga number one, and it's kind of a indigenous voice um, Chronicles of Narnia story. And there are animals on the cover. Um, I read that one. So I'm actually, just to uh, spoiler alert, um, go for the book that I am going to read is actually number two in that series. So I'm actually looking at that one and it's called The The Great Bear. That's the one I'm going to read. And um, obviously there's a bear on the cover. So there's that. Funny enough, the second one also is uh, a book where I've read the first one and my plan is to read the second one. And that is Omega Morales and The Legend of La Lechuza tongue twister. Okay. I was delighted by this book. It's so much fun. If you like um, families that have a little bit of magic to them and like a legacy kind of thing where the village around them used to recognize them as like useful and supportive and helpful and now kind of looks at it kind of side-eyed. Um, and then your main character in here, she is struggling with her magic. It's not working the way it's supposed to. Something's wrong there. Um, yeah, it's fantastic. It's so wonderful. Her best friend's a ghost. I mean, it's just a delight. And I've been waiting and waiting and waiting for the second one to come out and apparently it's out. So I'm just re trying to grab it from the library. And that one's called, of course, I don't have it written down. Omega Morales number two. I'll put it right here and then we'll learn the title together. But that is the one that I want and I know there's an animal on the cover. So those are my two recommendations with my two um, possibilities that I will probably read because I loved those the originals. And that takes us to books that you missed out on. This one's kind of a personal thing. It's kind of a hard one for anybody to push on you because what did you miss out on? And uh, I don't know. So here are the ones that if you missed out on these, you really missed out and maybe go take a look at these. And then I'll tell you the ones that I feel like I missed out on and share those with you. This book does not get nearly enough recognition or love. I absolutely adore this series and it's got fantastic authors and that is The Iron Trials. This is um, Holly Black and Cassandra Clare. They're middle grade. They wrote it years ago. It's got, I wanna say five in the series and it focuses in on these main characters here. Our main character that tells the story in this one is Callan Hunt. And Callan Hunt has been raised in, um, by his father after his mother died. 
to absolutely want nothing to do with the iron trials. It's this test you go and you take, and if you pass, you are taken to the school to kind of hone your magical abilities. He basically has been taught that you need to fail this test. Do not go with this test. Magic is evil, magic is bad, magic, 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 bad, 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 bad. Well, he can't really help it, and no matter how hard he tries, <laughs> To fail and he wow he fails beautifully um it's some of the most hysterical lovely writing i've taught this book in my classes before it's so much fun um so what happens when you are brought to the school and have to learn or unlearn everything that you thought you knew it's so fantastic it really is. The characters in here are fantastic, delightful. It's unexpected. I loved this book. I loved it. So if you haven't read this one, you really are missing out. Highly recommend. I wish more people would read this series. I really do. I love it. I love it. Okay. Enough about that. Um, number two, I would think that by now, if you haven't read it, you already know that you're missing out on it. And that is the Percy Jackson series with the new TV show coming out and like all of that. If you haven't read a Percy Jackson, you really should. You just bite the bullet. That is one that you definitely need to dabble in. And you honestly can't go wrong with anything that Rick Riordan writes. So if you don't want to read Percy Jackson, go read something else. Go read one of the others. The lovely part about him is his universe is slightly in interconnected. You don't have to read the ones before, but you'll like it a whole heck of a lot more if you do. Love this series. I do teach this one. Um, and I didn't have the first copy, so you're getting the second cover. This is the second book. Um, uh, yeah, anyway, The Sea of Monsters. Percy Jackson. Fantastic. Yes, you missed out. Funny enough, this is also the second one in this series because I think the first one is at my classroom being checked out by kids. Um, but this is the Wondersmith, uh, or sorry, this is the Nevermore series. Um, this is the Morgan Crow. The first one is the Trials of Morgan Crow. This is the Calling of Morgan Crow. And then Hunt for Morgan Crow fantastic series. I know it's a chunker. Jessica Townsend makes every page a delight. It's full of magic and fantasy and fantasticalness and you will fall in love with the characters. It's wonderful. So this is the cover to the second one. So let me put the cover of the first one up. Um, you did miss out on this if you haven't read it yet. Please pick that one up. It's so fun. Books that I feel like I missed out on. So these are my TBR. This is kind of my possibility list. And the first one is The Girl Who Drank the Moon. Everyone raves about this book and I have not read it yet. I've even had students who have recommended this one to me. So you know it's good when the kids are recommending it. I need to read it. So that's at the top of my list for this category. Um, the other one that I really, really, really want to get to is The Midnight Children. This is by Dan Geminhart. Um, he's coming to a festival of books that I'm going to be going to soon. And I really wanted to read one of his books. I've actually read a couple. He wrote, yes, The Remarkable Journey of Coyote Sunrise, which I read last year for Middle Grade March and loved it. Um, this is one of his and I've heard nothing but good things. So that is one that I feel like I may have missed out on. And the other one that I absolutely want to read is called The Tea Dragon Society. Everyone loves this book. Everyone raves about this book. Everyone is just so enchanted by this book and I feel like I've missed out. So that's also on my possibility list. That is what my middle grade March is sort of kind of looking like. And like I said before, I could check all of this and just go on my own and, and read a whole bunch of other things. Who knows what's going to happen. But that's kind of what I'm looking at. Um, if you saw one that you absolutely think I should read that I mentioned, please um, go ahead and share that in the comments below. Tell me what you are reading. And if you like this content, please feel free to hit like and subscribe. And yeah, happy reading for middle grade March. My favorite time of year. Anyway, enjoy and we'll talk to you soon.